Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sara and today we are thrift clipping a dress that I thrifted recently and the plan for the dress is to take it from a slightly dated almost granny look to a more chic dress perfect for spring and summer. So I thrifted this dress in my latest Come Thrift With Me which I will have linked down below if you're interested and straight away when I found it I knew that I wanted to use it in some sort of thrift clip because I really like the print on the fabric and I really like the fit of the dress because it's quite snug in the bodice of the dress but then the skirt sort of flares out and it's really large and flowy. However, I do think that the overall look of the dress is slightly dated but I have a plan for how we are going to change that. So the plan for this dress is to first alter the neckline because at the moment it is quite a high rounded neckline but I want to change it into a v-shaped neckline that is slightly more plunging. I also want to remove the arms of the dress to make the dress a bit more appropriate for spring and summer. And then I have an idea that I can use the leftover fabric from the arms and create a headscarf because if you have been following me on social media for the past years then you will know that during the warmer seasons then I love wearing a headscarf. I just think that it's a really cute look. And since I will have the extra fabric from the arms, I thought it would be super cute to make a matching headscarf to the dress. So when it comes to the thrift clip part, I was a little bit uncertain about how I wanted to do the neckline uh, because I wanted it to have a very neat finish. So I did what I always do when I find myself in need of guidance or help. I called my mum. So because of that, the first part of this video is actually filmed at my parents' house because my mum was helping me just get started and giving me some tips and ideas on how I should do the thrift clip. So I'm going to start off by showing you that footage, but I will of course talk you through the process and explain to you what we did. So the first thing that we did with the dress was that we removed the sleeves. And we did this by just cutting along the seam where the arms were attached to the bodice of the dress. And we tried to cut as close to the seam as possible because we knew that I wanted to use the arms for a headscarf. And then the whole project was of course blessed by the presence of our dog, Betty. And I think it's quite amazing because she has been blind for a couple of years now. But if there's fabric on the floor, especially the fabric that you're working with, she will be able to find it and she will lay down on it but she looks so cute while doing it, so it's okay. Now the next step was to cut out the neckline of the dress. And we did this by me trying the dress on and figuring out to which button we wanted to cut. And then we cut all the way down to just above the button that we wanted to keep. Because you want the dress to start off with a button so that it holds together and you don't have any flappy pieces of fabric around your neckline. After that, she helped me fold the edges of the neckline in and she also put needles in place to help me know how I was supposed to sew them. So that is more or less where we left off. So when I left my parents' house, the dress looked something like this. Uh, the arms were cut off with just raw hems and the neckline had been cut into a more deeper V and there are needles in place so that I know where I'm supposed to sew. So now that both me and the dress are back home again, the next step for me is to bring out my sewing machine so that we can start hemming the raw edges of the dress. So I thought that to start off, we would begin by doing the neckline, simply because it is covered in needles and it would be really nice to remove those before I work on the arms. Okay, so here we have the neckline um, and there's needles running all along the side down to the first button. So in an ideal world, you would start off with hemming the inside, so the raw edge, and then folding that over and sewing it in place. But since my mother has ever so kindly marked the needles where I am supposed to sew, I'm going to start with sewing along the edge of the neckline and then going in afterwards and hemming the inside. And the rest of the dress is sewn with a very fine and delicate straight stitch. Uh, which runs very close to the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to try and copy that sewing style uh, so that the dress looks slightly more uniform. However, they have been sewing with some sort of purple thread and I don't have that exact colour, so I've opted for a dark grey one instead because it was the most similar one that I had. But hopefully you won't be able to see a large difference. So in the beginning here 
I'm just following the old neckline, but the further down we move, then I will be merging over into our new neckline instead. And whilst doing that, just trying to make sure that everything is laying flat underneath. So there we have one of the sides of the dress half done because I still need to hem the inside. But before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and straight stitch the other side as well. And I just want to point out that I am by no means a professional seamstress. I am what we call here in Sweden a uh, glad amateur, which basically just means a happy amateur. But to be fair, I still think that it so far has turned out pretty good. So on the inside of the neckline now, I just want to trim away some of the excess fabric that doesn't need to be there. And then just copying the technique that they've used in the rest of the dress, I'm just going to fold the excess fabric in on itself and do a straight stitch. So in the end it will look something like this on the inside. So now we have a straight and clean hem both on the outside and on the inside. And when I'm done with all the sewing, I'm going to take the dress over to my iron and my ironing board and just press these down to make sure that they stay on the inside. Next side. sewing on the neckline is done. So now I'm going to move on to the sleeves. So when it comes to the sleeves I'm actually going to do this the right way. So I'm going to start off by just zigzagging along the raw edge to stop it from fraying and after that I'm going to fold it in and then fold it over once again so that we get a, um, a neat finish on the inside. Uh, but to start off with just a zigzag along the fraying hem. Okay, so now both of the sleeves have been zigzagged along the raw hem. And as I said before, what I'm going to do now with the raw hem is that I want to first fold it over once and then fold it over again because that gives me a very neat edge on the inside of the arm and I think that will look a little bit nicer and then we try to sew along the edge here. So in order to get this more or less even then I'm going to go around the entire whole of the arm, fold it down and pin everything in place with a needle so that I know that I get more or less the same width all the way around. Okay, so this is the first arm and it looks so good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. So now I'm just going to go in and do the same thing for the other arm and I will catch up with you when the other one is done. All of the sewing on the dress is now done and I'm going to show you exactly how it turned out in the try on clips later on. However, one thing that I would like to change with this dress in the future is the buttons because currently it's just these small, square, shiny buttons and I'm not really a big fan of them. However, when I was looking through my button collection, I didn't really find any buttons that I liked and the ones that I did like, I didn't have enough buttons of. 
so I don't have any buttons currently that I can switch with these. So I'm either going to have to look out for a cute set of buttons next time I'm out thrifting or I will just have to go online and see if I can buy some new buttons because in the future I do want to be changing these but that is not something that I will be doing in this video. So now I'm going to go and get the arms and let's see if we can make us a headscarf. Okay, so now we have arrived at the scarf part of this video. And to make the scarf, I have these two pieces of arm that we removed from the dress earlier. And I felt that when it came to making the headscarf, I needed some sort of reference. So I have bought out two of my other scarves and I thought that I could use them as a pattern and just trace the shape of the scarf onto the arm fabric. So that is the plan. And I think that I'm going to use this scarf as a model because it is a lot smaller and not as wide as the other one and hence it will use less fabric. So to start off I'm going to seam rip these sleeves uh, or actually just use a pair of scissors and cut down the seam so that we can open it up and get a bigger piece of fabric. And by doing that we get this slightly larger piece of fabric and then I'm going to do it on the other arm as well. So with these two pieces of fabric, I want to create a shape that is as big as possible so that we can fit the entire headscarf on. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the widest part of each arm towards each other, and then I'm actually going to sew those together so that we get one bigger piece. Uh, because the widest part of the headscarf, when you tie it, it ends up at the back of your head uh, and in my case I always wear it under my hair as well so I don't really think that anyone will notice that there is a stitch holding it together. If I pin the fabric together like this and then we add the headscarf on top then it is a little little bit shorter than I would like because we have this part poking out at the end so I'm going to see if I can work Okay, so slight change of plans. My fancy camera has gone through two pairs of batteries by now, so I don't have any more batteries to power it. So I'm just going to show you the rest of the process on my phone here. Okay, so I have pinned the arms together, outsides together, so to say. So this is the inside of the arm. And then I have folded the scarf in half and estimated where it would fit onto the arm. So what I'm going to do now is I want to do a stitch along this line here and then we'll just remove this excess fabric and then we have a piece of fabric that we can trace the scarf onto. Okay so I've stitched the sides together and I've cut off the excess fabric that was here and this is one of those instances when it would be really nice to have an overlock machine but I don't have that so on both of these sides I am doing a zigzag stitch instead to make sure that it doesn't fray. I have marked out with a set of needles where the scarf is on the fabric. However, I am going to add one to two centimeters uh, of seam allowance when I am cutting because I know that I will need to hem this in some way and I am planning on using a hem that is very similar to the one that they have used on this scarf. So it looks as if they have uh, just like I did on the dress, they folded it and then folded it in on itself again, so you get a very nice and neat edge. So when everything is cut and trimmed, we have the beginning of a scarf that looks something like this. However, the pattern along the middle has gone a little bit funky because there wasn't enough fabric, so I've just tried to sort of even that out. But apart from that, I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to try to hem this in a very fine and neat hem. We'll have to see how that goes, but that's the plan at least. I have finished hemming the scarf all the way around and let me just say that was a nightmare. All those needles I don't think I'm ever doing anything like that again because it was so fiddly and so time consuming but at least it's hemmed now. So let me just turn you around. 
Since I'm done with all the sewing parts now, I'm just going to take out my ironing board and iron everything that needs to be ironed. And then we will be moving straight on into the try-on clips so that you can see how it turned out. But before I leave you to watch the try-on, then I just wanted to say that a big thank you for watching so far. And if you are interested in thrifting or thrift clips, then I suggest that you subscribe to my channel because that is the sort of thing that I love making videos about. So if that is something that you're interested in, then press the subscribe button down below. But now, here are the final results. <laughs>